What's going on guys? Jabron here from Photographers on YouTube and this video is brought to you by ATS Rentals. They were kind enough to send me their D800 so I could do this comparison video for you guys uh, with my D600. Um, so please check them out. Not only do they have competitive rates and shipping charges but they also give you free rental insurance. So just that alone is going to save you at least 30 to 60 bucks. All right, let's dive right into the review. Uh, what we're going to do is, just like what we do with other um, product reviews, we're going to look at uh, focusing, um, especially in super low light. Um, you're going to spend a couple of uh, thousand dollars. You want to make sure your camera focuses in really you know, difficult low light situation. So we're going to look at focusing. We're going to look at colors. We're going to look at dynamic range. We're going to look at um, ISO. So we'll look at a lot of sample pictures. Um, and after that, we'll basically conclude the video and I'll um, share my opinion. I'm not here to pick a winner and say, well, this camera is better than the other. It doesn't work that way. I'm here to tell you which camera is better suited for you. Okay, and then ultimately you have to decide. I'll share my professional opinion and then you basically have to just pull the trigger. All right, so right now I'm using D800 to focus in low light and see how well it performs. The only light available in this room is coming from that laptop just to give you guys an idea. Uh, first, I'm going to use the camera AF Assist, this beam right here, and then I'm going to turn on the flash to use the red beam, which the camera may not pick up on that red beam. All right, so let me see how well it focuses in such low light with the camera AF Assist. All right, so when I zoomed in, it struggled for maybe a split second right there. But so far, the speed is very, very fast it's I will not say that this is slow focusing and if you can focus like this in such low light then you know when you when you have good amount of light the focusing is going to be exceptionally fast all right so now I'm going to turn off the camera AF assist I'm just going to turn on the speed light in which it will automatically just take over so right now you're probably not going to see this but there's a red beam uh, that is coming out of uh, the speed light. Okay, so let me see how well it performs. Absolutely phenomenal. I mean, I can focus on a completely black screen of my TV uh, with the AF assist through the speed light. I can zoom in, zoom out. It is not a problem. So with the speed light, doesn't matter how dark the room is, exceptionally, exceptionally well. All right, so right now I'm testing D600 for low light focusing. First, I'm going to use the built-in AF assist in the camera, and then I'm going to use turn on the speed light and use the red beam that comes out of your speed light to, to test the focusing and see how fast it is. All right, so I'm going to turn off the speed light and just use the camera AF assist. I'm going to zoom in and see if there's any difference. Struggle here a little bit. Struggling again. Struggling again. It's basically, it struggles for a split second. Alright, so I'm going to turn on the speed light and see if that makes a difference. Now the speed light red beam is going to take over. Most likely the camera is not going to pick up on that. No problem at all. So if you're using speed light on your camera, you're not going to have any issues. But for off-camera flash photography, um, you're going to have a little bit of uh, trouble with D600. All right, folks, so let me explain how this is going to work. Pictures on your left are taken with D600. Picture on your right are taken with D800. I have changed, I have renamed them so it's easier for you guys to follow. Um, let me give you a quick example. Dynamic range, it's going to say dynamic range. And ISO, 
um, you can read the ISO. This is uh, that, that's not part of the, the comparison that we're doing. Um, right here you can see D600 ISO 1600 and as we go further it will change. So um, if you're not too sure just look at the file name and it will give you um, an idea. Okay. Alright so let's start off with the colors. Um, you could see that D600 has better colors than D800. Now these are same aperture, same lens, um, and same shutter speed as well. Everything is the same. Maybe uh, my focal length was off by a little. So D600, 6.3, 160, ISO 400, 42 millimeter, and then you have D800, 6.3, 160, ISO 400, 38 millimeter. So that's the only thing that, that is off here and there. Everything else, it's basically identical. And the pictures that you're seeing are raw images. This is, these are not edited. This is just, um, you know, straight out of, you know, the camera raw. And I just exported it so you guys could see it. So color-wise, there's a very slight edge to D600. Let's take a look at the next color picture. Uh, once again, everything is exactly the same um, exposure-wise and depth of field-wise. Okay, um, same story. Uh, D six hundred has a very slight edge um, in the color. Um, you can you can um, notice that right here. Okay, I'm going to come back to the dynamic range and let me explain this. All right, so this is your. The, this is my proper shot, okay? So some of the samples, uh, some of the sample shots that you're going to see are going to be crooked and not so pretty. And the reason why is because this is a tourist spot, okay? You can see the people. So I tested three cameras that day, um, you know, one by one. So I couldn't camp out there for, you know, five, ten minutes while other people were waiting for me. It would be very rude. So I was doing all this, you know, rather, rather fast. So that's why you'll see the picture slightly um, crooked and I actually forgot to test ISO 800 so that's why this picture is different than all the other sample pictures that you're going to see so I apologize for that alright so let's take a look at ISO 800 on D 600 let me zoom in and then D 800 I am not seeing a, a very clear difference in this. Uh, D600 does seem slightly cleaner, but it's not something we can pick through naked eye um, if the picture is basically zoomed out. I, I cannot tell the difference. Both pictures look extremely clean. When you zoom in, you see a very, very slight difference. So up to ISO 800, you cannot, you cannot tell. All right. Uh, next is ISO 1600. Let's zoom in. All right. Now you see a very slight difference. Okay, this is the 600, this is the 800. Um, very, very slight. It's not very noticeable. And I can only notice it when I zoom in. Okay, the 800 has a little bit of extra noise. But up to this point, this is pretty much no noise to me. If you zoom out, you cannot tell that there's, there's any noise in this image. Let's go to... ISO 3200, let's zoom in. Right now it looks clean to me, okay? But let's zoom in. Okay, same story. There is a very little difference. There's, there's a little bit of noise here. And I believe it could be because the size of the pixel on D800 um, is bigger because it's 36 megapixel camera. So you'll notice there's there's some little bit of extra noise than D600. Uh, okay, uh, not a major difference. And sharpness wise, I think they look pretty much uh, the same. All right, let's get to 
ISO 4000 looks clean All right, here we go. All right, now at ISO 8000, you see you see good amount of noise, but very much treatable um, in post processing. Um, so very very slight HD 600. Now the other thing I'm noticing is also the colors. You'll you you know you've already looked at two uh, sample pictures of the colors. But here you'll see that D600 has a slightly better uh, contrast um, versus D800 um, noise-wise. It's very hard to pick. Almost, almost identical. Um, I see a little bit of extra grain here, but nothing that you know really jumps out and says, "Wow, this is this camera is a you know clear uh, winner." Okay. ISO 6400. Let's zoom in. All right, this lady's not going to be happy if she sees the video on YouTube. All right, now you see a lot of noise. Uh, you see a lot of noise, and now I, I you can tell the difference. The ISO of D600 is definitely better than um, the D800. You can see there's much more noise than um, than D600. Now, one thing I want to test is sharpness-wise. I don't know. You guys tell me. Um, I'm not seeing. I'm looking at this right here and just comparing the the sharpness because when you increase the noise, the pictures do get softer. Um, Maybe a little slight edge to D D six hundred. These differences are so minute that uh, I don't think it really matters that much, um, in my opinion. Like it's hard to pick a clear winner. But in noise department, you can tell that D six hundred um, is definitely better in color and in in noise as well. Okay. All right. Now look at the dynamic range all right so here's a dynamic range um, same time same exposure look I cannot tell this this part right here is the Sun that's direct Sun right there okay so the only thing that I changed here was I reduced the highlights because this whole thing was white um, and that's how you basically recover, you know, the data. But the camera has to capture that data. So, you know, both cameras have great dynamic range. But looking at this, I cannot tell you, you know, one is better than the other. It's this test is just not conclusive. Um, so dynamic range, I would have to say they do. They both do a pretty uh, decent job. But it's uh, I cannot say that go with you know if you're a landscape photographer, definitely go with you know one over the other because you know uh, this one has a better dynamic range so I would give it a tie in color and ISO there's a very slight edge to D C uh, D 600 um, let's take a look at um, I'm not gonna read this whole review this is by Scott Kelby he basically shared his opinion um, I'll post a link in the description if you want to read this whole thing um, he's basically saying that I've been saying for a long time that both cameras are targeted for different customers okay um, that is why I got D600 instead of uh, D800 as a backup to my D3S so in the end he basically said D600 so when you see my conclusion after this part um, what I did is that I basically uh, identified those different customers Scott Kelby's talking about you know if if what type of photographer are you and based on that, I made the recommendation that if you're that photographer, get D600. And if you're other photographer, then get D800. All right. Uh, let's watch the last part of the video. Real quick, guys. If you enjoyed this video or if you find my other videos helpful, please give it a quick thumbs up and um, share it with your friends. I would really appreciate that. Thank you.
All right, now that you've seen the uh, sample pictures, what do you guys think? I honestly was not expecting D600 to, to be able to hang with D800 um, the way it did. It, in colors, you can see that there, there's a, a slight difference in there. Not a huge deal because all the pictures get post-processed um, anyway. And in ISO, there's a very, very slight edge to D600 um, as well. Even if they were you know, exactly the same, um, that would still be uh, it would st it, it would still be a surprising uh, thing for me. Um, so here's a million dollar question: Is D600 a professional camera or not? That's every a lot of people are are arguing over that. Look, by definition, if you ask, most people will say no because Nikon says it's an entry level, um, you know, full frame body. And if you look at it. It doesn't have 51 focusing points. So technically, yes, it has some issues uh, with focusing. When you're doing off-camera flash photography, um, focusing becomes, it, it struggles a little bit. And when you're doing weddings or events, even a split second makes a huge difference, okay? So by definition, people may not say that it's professional, but can you use the camera in a professional setting? And the answer is yes. I have used it. Scott Kelby has used it. I've, I've been shooting, you know, uh, with D600 as a backup camera. I have my D300 on this side, D600 on this side. So instead of ch me constantly changing lens, I just go with my D600 and take some shots. So you can use this in a professional sh uh, setting, sure, but I'm not using it as a primary camera. So there, so there is a difference. The question is, can you use this? Can you use D600 as a primary camera? It depends. It depends on the type of shoot you're doing and the frequency of the shoot as well. If you're doing family portraits, outdoor family portraits, or even studio shots, you can easily use D600, no problem at all. Um, if you are doing newborn stuff, even if you're doing two newborn shoots a week, which is highly unlikely unless you have a huge network of you know uh, uh, pregnant moms, um, you can do this. But when it comes to low light, that's when you, you're going to run into uh, some problems here and there. Not all the time, because if the ceiling is regular, uh, you know, height up to, let's say, you know, 20 feet, you know, white color, beige color, you'll, you'll be all right. But what if someone contacts you for a wedding and, you know, the ceiling is dark brown wood, 30 foot ceiling? That's going to be a problem. Now you have to do off camera flash setup, and that's when you're not using the speed lights AF assist that's when the camera is going to struggle a little bit so it has its limitation you sure you could use this in a professional settings but know the limitation before you take on the job or before you buy this camera you should be you know fully aware of its challenging the other issue D600 right now is having is the dust problem um, somehow when the shutter flaps or whatever it's creating from internally it's it's peeling off something um, and you are seeing um, dust spots and oil stuff on the top left corner you can google that it's all over there are a couple of videos um, for that as well so keep that in mind it eventually will go away Nikon is taking care of that you have to call them up and you know they'll you know just ship the camera and whatever they have to change it'll do it at, 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 at no cost so know um, that there are a little bit of issues with the camera as well and that, you know maybe you want to wait a little before uh, you purchase the camera so can you use this in a primary as, as a primary camera sure but you know I just told you the type of uh, uh, you know shoots you can do now besides that you can do your landscape stuff 24 megapixel you can do your um, macro photography with it you can do small events no problem I use it as a backup so you could actually use this as a backup to your you know some other primary camera and Scott Cavley's used it for sports so if he's shooting NFL games with it as a backup keep that in mind and he was happy with it and you know he recommended D600 over D800 so that's you know that's his opinion um, and you know, I didn't get D800 because of the 36 megapixel uh, size. I do a lot of shoots. 
I do a lot of shoots, I have to go through thousands and thousands of pictures. So for me, there's no way to really tackle 36 megapixel. No, it's not because of the storage. Storage is extremely cheap. It's also the processing time. When you take the camera, when you take your memory card and you're transferring hundreds of pictures, you know, you're, you're sitting there waiting for that to happen. And, you know, I bought my, my computer, you know, a few months ago, and it's a pretty fast computer. But when, when, it, when the time comes to transfer, you know, 36 megapixel files and you have hundreds of those, it's, 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 uh, it's, it's a problem. So for that reason, I did not go for D800. Now, please keep in mind, D800 is targeting totally different type of people. D800 is made f to target, you know, medium format cameras, okay? That is not your D600 audience. That is not your, you know, a D700 audience. It's totally different. So if you are doing commercial shoots, if you are doing product photography, or if you're doing fashion photography, D800 would be better for you, okay? ISO is not going to be an issue because it's a very controlled lighting environment, okay? You're not going to shoot products or you're not going to do fashion shoots at high ISO. So it doesn't matter which camera is better or not. Colors, every picture is going to get post-processed. So that little edge that D600 has, it, it really is irrelevant because pictures are going to get edited, okay? Sure, it's good to get stuff right in the camera to get those nice contrasts and vibrant colors, but you know how much editing, you know, uh, uh, people do on fashion stuff or even in, in product photography. Um, so if that's what you're doing, if you're, if you're doing commercial shoots and you know for a fact that your client's going to make a poster out of it and put it in, in front of his store or something, or a poster, you know, by the train station, you need the megapixel. So for that, you're going to have to go with, with D800. Now, maybe you do those type of shoots, maybe, you know, once or twice a year. So perhaps you could get D600. And whenever you have to do those shoots, you can rent D800 or some other camera with a lot of megapixel. So multiple options um, you can take. This is how I feel. I am using D600 as a backup camera. I would personally not use it as a primary camera simply because I do a lot of shoots, a lot of weddings, a lot of events, and that could become an issue for me. Now, if I were doing only mostly family shoots and newborn or, you know, where it's controlled uh, environment, it's D600 would, would get the job done for me with, with no problem, okay? So hope all is well. Um, guys, if you enjoy my videos, please give it a quick thumbs up and share it with your friends. And also check out my budget photography um, equipment website. Um, and if you like anything, um, um, please, uh, we'll make the purchase. <laughs> I don't know how to say this. Um, anyway, hope all is well, and I'll talk to you guys later.